love everyone just coming to you today with another video that the lord has put on our heart to bring you the information for and this time we're going to be talking about honoring the new year and also um making new year's resolutions we're going to start with just honoring the year changing from one time to another one year to another and we seem to want to celebrate that or give some special reasoning to that there is no actual new year only it only applies to your calendar date if you noticed in your lifetime it does not recharge your health it does not restart on your health for the next year it does not restart on your debt your job doesn't start over nothing starts over actually but the calendar so we are celebrating this in the form of tradition. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which was planted, and so forth and so on. So in this, the, the scripture lets us know that there are times and there are seasons. Christians do not celebrate years and the beginning of years. If you are a true Christian, then your life is surrounded by seasons and times because this is the way that the Bible speaks about it. What are seasons? A season is a time characterized by a particular circumstance or feature, or it could be a suitable time or natural time or occasion. It could also be an indefinite time, an indefinite period of time, a period of the year characterized by or associated with a particular activity or phenomenon. Even though it tells us that it's times and it's seasons for all things, it says this in Acts chapter 1 verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. So again, Christianity is based around, a lot of the scriptures are based around seasons and times, not years, which Christians ought not to follow. These are the very things that are going to be uh, could cause your life to be cursed and we're going to get further into it to show you how these things are actually taking an effect on your life. We also understand this. The scripture tell us that whatever we sow, we're going to reap. So you'll see a bunch of scriptures that relate the two things, harvesting and planting, terms which every man ought to have been involved with during those times for their livelihood. So the Bible referenced these in, as a point of textual definition or to get it to, to make it plain to us. Jesus spoke in parables. So he speaks to us in ways that would be more understanding to us. So he used the terms for planting and harvesting and seeding and different other things. We also know that if you, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So if you had a season of sowing bad seed, then you're going to also, at the end of that season, you're going to reap whatever it is you have sown. If it was good, you're going to you're going to receive fruit that is built from good sowing. If you sow bad things, then you're going to reap what you have sown of your bad seeds that you have planted. And nothing is going to change that. Not because it's changing from 2021 to 2022. It's going to change that. Spiritually, nothing is going to change. Actually, physically, nothing changes. So just observing that time altogether as a Christian you are sinning. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're sinning because God's laws applies to everyone. Whether you believe in God or not, it's still going to apply to you. Your name is still written in the book of life. Whether it is that you, you're you going to make it to, to the kingdom of our Heavenly Father or you are not, or you are not on that list. So either way, your record is being kept. So we understand that Christians deal with seasons and times, not years. We also understand in Acts that it's not known for us to know what seasons and what times God is going to do anything. So not even in our life do will we know. We don't know if we do something bad, how long God will, will uh, reward us for the bad that we did. Also, we don't know, neither is it in the heart of man, the reward that God had for those that love him. So if you also, if you're doing the right thing, you don't really know how God is going to reward you. The only purpose you have is to praise and worship him for all things and to walk straight in his laws and in his judgments. These are the only uh, responsibilities that you have. These are the only things that he's allowed us to have control over. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements Whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days 
and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you the labor in vain. So again, we become slave to these things. And we think, oh man, another month comes, another year has come. And we become subject to these type of things because we're following it. You're going against scripture by even observing the changing of the year because it's of none effect. It's in vain. It's nothing really ever happens. So this is a man-made celebration. Christians are not to follow man-made customs. No one is to. We are all to follow the commandments and the laws in which God has put in place. Every church that celebrated, you have been going against the will of God, the principles of God, and the word of God. You're being disobedient, and you're causing people's lives to be cursed because they're coming to you in hopes of, if they sitting in church, that's going to be the first thing they did that year, and all of a sudden, that's supposed to be a good thing, or maybe it is supposed to bring more favor from God by doing this. No, it is a ritual. It is a practice a man-made practice, a ritual, which we know are things that God does not agree with. God does not accept man-made customs. So it say, you're doing this. He said, man, I'm afraid of you. Let's all the work that I done put in, Jesus sacrificing his life, God sending all the prophets to, send, to bring the word to us, putting the Bible together, putting scriptures together for our learning, for our reproofing, for our correction. All so that we can still do our own thing. God is not pleased with this and we should not be doing it. No church will be able to justify having watch night service or being in church as the clock strikes 12 and the calendar year changes. This is a custom made by man. And any preacher that supports this is, of, is none of God's son. It's not sent of God. It's not following scripture. He's being disobedient. This is where these type of things come from. It talks about the king, which is, is referred to as a beast. And it talks about how the beast plans to take over the Christian and do harm to the Christian. So the vision that Daniel saw, he asked for uh, an explanation of it. And he, it has been broken down to him. Well, then it gets to what the beast has in mind for the Christian. And it says in verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high, talking about our heavenly father. So the beast is going to speak great words against our heavenly father and shall wear out the saints of the most high. So his agenda is to speak bad, discredit God and any saints of God. His agenda is to tear you down and to wear you out. And it says, and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. One of the tactics of the beast is to change times and to change laws. So we as Christians, we as Christian churches, Christian leaders should all know this already. You have some Christian leaders where well, they say they're Christian leaders, but they are not following the commandments of our Heavenly Father, which means that they are not. They have all the appearance of Christian leaders, but they're leading the people astray by just these simple customs. Okay, so we see here that one of the tactics of the beast is to change times and to change laws, to wear the Christian out. Why? Because you, it keeps you from being aware of the times. And rather than you thinking that, okay, we're marching forward and we losing time, you're going to think the time is always renewed. If we sitting here thinking that we're running out of time and the beast is to let us think that we always have enough time or maybe even more time than what we need to get done, what we have to get done. Next thing you know, you look around and you've gotten older or other things have happened in your life to where you can't fully commit to our Heavenly Father because you're going to weigh those options, commit to our Heavenly Father or get the things you want. You're going to always choose yourself according to your flesh if you don't have the will of God in you, if the will of God doesn't drive you. So one of the tactics of the beast is to change times and change laws. So we got to be mindful of the tricks and the woos and the wiles of the devil so that we can resist these things. This is what the scriptures are for. Through these scriptures, we understand that we should not be celebrating a New Year's Day. Because it's the law of the land to observe it, most things are closed. We should not be having celebrations and we should not be actually mentally expecting things to change. Okay, we should be praising, worshiping our Heavenly Father for each and every day that we are allowed to wake up and see another day. Not just one specific day where a number changes on a piece of paper. And nothing else changes besides that date, a date which was set forth by man to keep track of the days that he has on earth. 
or it was meant to actually keep charge of the days to be able to better plan when seed planting time came and when harvesting time came. Okay, so we've changed it into a whole new thing and we should not be observing these customs and these rituals. And not only have we been wrong in celebrating New Year's Day in the first place, uh, but another thing we like to do for, on New Year's Day is make New Year's resolutions. Now, a resolution is actually just a vow. And the scripture tells us that we should not be making vows. So by even doing that, we're causing other curses for coming on our life. So by thinking that we're doing something positive to increase our chance of having a better year in the upcoming year, we're actually doing things that make sure that the upcoming year is worse than the one we just left out of according to our mentality. Since we are leaving one year date and going to another year date, which is the only thing that changes is the numbers. Nothing else really actually changes that mean anything in your life. Okay, so um, not only do we do things that we think going to in, increase our chance of having a better year, but we actually start off by doing things that are going to make sure that our year is worse than the one that we were just in if we reference it in that manner. So it says a New Year's resolution is a firm decision made on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day to do or refrain from doing something over the course of the upcoming year. So we make promises to ourselves. We make promises we're going to do this. We make promises we're going to do that on New Year's Day. And a promise is a vow. A vow is a promise. A resolution is a promise. We're going to get into scriptures that that show us that vows, making vows is going against scripture and that actually causes you to be cursed more than blessed. Again, ye have heard that it had been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Okay, so it tell you, you cannot forswear. So the scripture says we cannot forswear ourselves and forswear means to agree to give up or to do without so even to ourselves we should not make those vows which are the same thing as your new year's resolution so this is letting us know that this is not something that we are supposed to be engaged in so let's get back to matthews and it says thou shalt perform thine oath to the lord which means that the only promises you can make are the ones that you make to our heavenly father to our lord the savior jesus christ so he said perform thine oath he said but i say unto you swear not at all Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, so you can't swear by that because it don't belong to you, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, you can't even swear by your own head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So just making a New Year's resolution altogether is illegal when it comes to the scriptures. Illegal to our Heavenly Father. You're doing this out of evil. So the scriptures look at this as being an evil thing for you to make a New Year's resolution. Why do we actually do all these things? Well, we do them because we have been taught of them by other people. Other people that have been leading us, whether it was our parents or whether it was our spiritual leaders. But let's go to Mark and we're going to start at chapter 7 and we're going to go to verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition, making the word of God none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered. Many such like things do ye. And so this, again, we follow in these things because we have been taught these by other people and again once you involve yourself in these things you make all the rest of the commandments of God of none effect in your life which means that it would, without the presence of God there's going to be the presence of evil so again by you thinking you're doing the right thing to give you a good start or a good heads up for the new year that you supposedly have entered into you're actually causing it your near future to start off in a bad way That's going to explain to us why it is 
we even do this in the first place. We, we, we hoping in a new year because most of us are looking for a refreshing and we might have been through some bad things recently. Since we've been taught that the new year starts something over, we have this idea that it starts something over, which it really never does. Um, it's just a tradition that we've been taught and, it, and we stick it with it. But we do this in hopes of having a refreshing or having a, a, a let's start and fresh, which you understand that if you're in debt in December 31st, you're going to still be in debt on, on January 1st. Your debt is not going to change. If anything, it's going to increase because the interest rate for the next month is going to be applied. So we have these type of things that we need to go forward with. We need to understand. So Acts tell us this. The only way for us to have a true refreshing of our spirit, a true refreshing of our life is this, is that ye refreshing. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That is the only way. That is the only way for us to have a new start and have a new life or have a new beginning is to get saved, is to repent and let the presence of the Lord come into your life. You can do this at any time, on any date. In any month of a calendar year, at any hour, at any minute, at any second. On the History Channel, it gives you an explanation of how these things and these traditions were all started. And it says this, the ancient Babylonians are said to have been the first people to make New Year's resolutions some 4,000 years ago. They were also the first to hold recorded celebrations in honor of the New Year. Though for them, the year began not in January, but in mid-March when the crops were planted again. This is what the Bible refers to. This is how we talk. The Bible refers to planting season and planting seed and harvest. Their new year started around planting seed. Okay, it said, during a massive 12 day religious festival known as Akaitu, the Babylonians crowned a new king or reaffirmed their loyalty to the reigning king. They also made promises to the gods to pay their debts and return any objects they had borrowed. These promises could be considered the forerunners of our New Year's resolutions, if the Babylonians kept to their word, their pagan gods, which are not our Heavenly Father, any god that is not our Heavenly Father, is a pagan god. Their pagan gods would bestow favor on them for the coming year. If not, they would fall out of the gods' favor, a place no one wanted to be. So again, man's customs, which men were they? Now you see which man they were. Not only are the churches celebrating New Year, but they're doing it behind the Babylonians, the cursed enemies of God. We're following man's tradition, which we have been taught. Satan has came and, and tripped us up and bamboozled us. So if you have a spiritual leader that says he's in this Bible and God is leading him, he should have already known these things and he should not be having watch not serve. He should be teaching you not to uh, observe New Year's Day as something brand new because that's a custom of man. And not only is it a custom of man, but you serving a pagan God. You taking part in the other rituals. How many times did God tell the children of Israel, when you go into their land, when you go into a strange country or a strange land, do not after their customs, serve not their gods. And all this time we've been doing it. Myself guilty also because the churches that I went to all had watch night service. Okay, we're speaking to you as a Christian. We want you to learn and live for our Heavenly Father so that you may be rewarded with being asked to live with him in the next existence. We don't want you dying and going to hell. Okay, we're not here for your money. We're not here to try to gain off you. We want you to gain by finding our Heavenly Father and living for Him and helping the next person to gain by finding our Heavenly Father and living for Him so that you may one day be able to live in the next existence with Him for eternity. Okay, this is our main goal here. Okay, so we're going to teach you the truth no matter what. And we've been taught the same way also. Uh, making New Year's resolution and even observing New Year's Day all together is a sin and sinful before God and will make Make you a enemy of God because if you practice any sin before God, if you Jesus said if you're not with me, then you are against me. So if you're practicing things that go against the will of God, you are a against our Lord and Jesus Christ, which makes you an enemy, which makes you an enemy not only of Him but of His Father, which is our Heavenly Father. Don't let nobody fool you. This is the case, but rather, okay, don't make these vows. Let's go also to James chapter 4. In conclusion, go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? 
It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall do this or do that. So just making vows to yourself or anybody else, you should not be joining churches. I mean, we can get into a lot of things about these vows, but specifically today, we're talking about you making New Year's resolutions and you observing New Year's Day. You have actually put curses on your life that makes your future, which you are looking to increase your chances of a better year because you're putting that basis on being inside of a year rather than inside of a season. You understand that God deals with us in times and seasons, not years. Okay, so in your mentality, you think in year. So you're making the year that you're coming into worse than the year that you're going out of, if you want to look at it in that sense. I'm talking to you because these are the beliefs that we have. So this is why I'm associating it that way. But you're actually making your near future worse than your recent past because of you taking part in these rituals to these pagan gods by celebrating New Year's Day. Let's not do that. Let's spend our every day giving thanks to God for allowing us to be in existence on that day, giving us another chance to do that, which is right in his sight and do his works before we actually aspire, before our judgment day comes, which is your day that your spirit and your fleshly body separate. Whatever day that may be, that's your day of judgment, that's your day of reckoning, that's the time and when you will appear before our Lord and Jesus Christ to be judged, okay, to know your fate for eternity. So we want to have you prepared for that day. And, and have some hope of being accepted to live and dwell with our Lord and Savior and our Heavenly Father in His heavenly kingdom. Until next time.